congratulations. You just found the Safety Pays podcast. This is a safety resource podcast based on information that we have on our website, dcshrm.com. My name is Christian Robbins, and I am co-founder of dcshrm.com and the content creator. About three to four years ago, I was looking for safety software to help with training and couldn't find anything in the market that really met the needs that I had at the time. So we started creating this software to make safety easier and convenient for our employees. What we found is the easier you make safety, the more people participate in it. And what we've done with DCSHRM.com is we've made it so that all the safety resources that are there from training to evaluations to checklists can all be delivered via link to an employee's mobile device, either through email or text. This pushes out the information to the device they're on anyway and makes it so that they're more engaged with safety and we can do safety more frequently, which gives them more top of mind awareness. So in the last 25 years, I've managed facilities from heavy manufacturing to construction to warehousing. They all have a unique set of problems that have to be solved, especially regarding safety and safety training. And what we've done here is we've tried to make things as simple as possible so that you can get the safety culture that you want in your facility. This podcast today will be how to start safety culture in your facility. Because a lot of times the questions that I get are, how do we make our employees more aware of what their actions have on safety in the workplace? Um, Most accidents are totally preventable and avoidable. It happens that people aren't paying attention or they're doing something that they don't know how to do and end up making a real problem for themselves. So what we want to do is make sure that the safety culture that's in our facilities is one where people look out for each other and they know and understand the rules and are able to follow those rules. So the first thing when we're trying to establish safety culture is your hiring process and new hire training. I always try and scare people out of taking a job with me when I'm managing a high risk facility, because I only want people there that truly understand what those risks are. So on a construction site, I would meet a potential employee at the site. I would walk them through the site and My questions wouldn't be just about their skills in construction, but it would be, as you're walking through the site, I want you to tell me what you see and what's right and what's wrong. So point out a ladder, an employee working on a ladder. Maybe they're working to the side instead of straight across the ladder. Maybe there's a ladder being used for access that's not tied off. Make those the focus of the interview so that you understand if these people that you're interviewing have a notion of what your worksite safety looks like. It's always great to have a second set of eyes as well. And if you're walking through the job site and looking at safety items, your existing employees will notice this. And it works for any facility. As you walk through a warehouse, the same thing. What do you see here? What's right? What's wrong? If there's something spilled on the floor and people are just walking past it, Make sure that you and the new hire are noticing these things and even set up scenarios where you can test them as they come through. Now, once you've selected some candidates and you've decided to hire them, this is where you can really start to set the tone with your new hire training. And new hire training should consist of all your annual required OSHA trainings. So things like hazard communication, emergency evacuation, bloodborne pathogens, all those little things that you should be teaching in your facility, no matter if it's an office environment or a construction or manufacturing environment. 
These are things that have to be taught once a year. So start with those things because they're very basic and they should be done upon new hire anyway. The other thing that you're going to want to make sure that you're training in new hire is for the specific equipment processes that those employees are going to be engaged in in your facility. Now, a lot of new hire training is boring. And don't ever put a new employee into a room and play them a video and not interact with them. This is the least efficient way for anybody to get any type of safety training. Very basic training, but quite honestly, it should be one-on-one -on -one or small groups where you're having interaction and you can gauge whether they're um, picking up on the training or not. When you, when you take the time to have personal interaction, they understand that safety is important and that you're making the investment. Now, as the safety manager, it doesn't have to be you, but it should be somebody that has a good notion of safety and is able to make communication in a way that's not going to either bore or annoy the person that's being trained. So as we do those basic things, we do um, the equipment and the things that they're going to be exposed to specifically we need to do any certifications that these employees might need. So if you if your facility certifies on certain equipment, um, be that forklift or materials handling type or hoist or anything, those things you need to pay attention to and make sure that you're doing first. Okay? Once those are done, then there's a few things that, that we want to make sure that we give all employees as tools as they move forward. One, you want to tell them that every employee has stop work authority. And what's stop work authority? Stop work authority is the authority to stop any work that they question the safety of the process or the people involved in the process. And this will get used if you haven't trained employees as to what the hazards and risks are. Okay? So if you've trained them, they'll see the processes and understand them and won't have to stop work. But if you haven't trained them, they will stop work because they won't understand what's going on. They'll think that the, the hazards there are presenting a danger to the people that are involved. So this will keep you focused on making sure that they understand every process and if you miss something, it will help them so that they know that at any time they feel like there's a safety problem, they can stop work and make sure that everybody's safe. The other thing that you want to talk to new employees about is workplace accidents. Always report accidents, no matter how small. Um, I taught a class the other day to a group, uh, had an employee that came to me and said, hey, the only reason I'm talking to you is because you reminded us to report all accidents. And he said, I was walking down that hall this morning and there was a nail sticking out. And it got me on my arm about shoulder height. And he lifted up his sleeve and he showed me. And there was a nice little scratch there. And so he got it cleaned up and had a bandage on it. But three days later, he was in the hospital with a staph infection from that scratch. So... Make sure employees understand that no matter how inconsequential an injury may seem, it needs to be reported so that we have a good first report of injury to make sure that anything that happens on the job site, we can help them take care of. This keeps them engaged, and anything that happens, they'll report, which is good for the workplace. Okay? So as you talk about accidents, also talk to them about return to work and modified duty. Every employer should have a return to work modified duty program. This is what happens when an employee has an injury. They can't come back to the full duty, but they can come back to partial duty. Why do we want them back to partial duty? Well, the reason we want them back to partial duty is employees that get back to the workplace heal more quickly and heal more completely. Anytime you let them stay at home with an injury, they get lazy, and they heal more slowly. So really what we want to do is make sure they understand that 
If there is an injury, we want to get them back to work. So we talked a little bit about the specific hazards in the workplace, the tools and equipment. Any tools or equipment, you should have an in-house training program that you put these people through before you turn them loose. I've been into facilities where employers have new hires, they've put them through a couple of safety videos, and then they throw them out onto the production floor and say, okay, this is your job, and basically have somebody stand next to them for a couple of minutes, are you comfortable with this, and then they walk away to go do their job, and the new hire is in a place where they're operating equipment maybe they've never operated before, or doing a process that they've never done before. Something as simple as operating a a manual pallet jack, you should train on that. Lifting, you should train on that. These are accidents that happen all the time because people don't get trained. Please don't put your employees in a situation where they have to guess what your expectations are as far as safety because then you'll get exactly the safety culture that you're um, instilling into those people. So the other thing that we want to do is we want to spread out safety training. We don't want to take and put someone to sleep with safety training for eight hours a day the first three days that they're in our facility. What we want to do is we want to spread it out. Make an hour to an hour and a half um, your baseline. Take them out for a little bit of experience in your facility or on your work site let them do some of the processes that you've talked about in person and then take them back, talk to them more about safety, do some more training for equipment, work on those certifications that they're going to need to perform their jobs safely and responsibly in your facility. Then go back, do some more practical and do that over the first couple of weeks. Um, I found that it's the most effective if Even if you're only doing an hour to an hour and a half a day to make sure you're getting those basics covered, that works better than two eight-hour days at the beginning of their career on your job site or in your facility. So spread it out so that it's not boring. And then make sure that you're making training a regular thing, that it's happening at regular intervals, whether that's weekly, daily, Really, the key to safety is keeping it top of mind and making sure that those reminders are things that your employees are engaging, that they're talking about. Um, Personal experiences in safety are one of the big stories that you can do that really makes it come home for employees. Um, As I do new hire training, I talk about a couple of different experiences that I've had on job sites and in facilities where we've had some really bad accidents because people were either in a hurry or taking shortcuts, which are the greatest contributors to workplace accidents. So, for example, I have one story that I tell of a construction site where a guy needed a shim And he's looking around for a shim to put in a wall that he's building, and he can't find one. But he sees a piece of 2 by 4 on the ground. And so he decides to pick that up, and then he takes his big old Bosch worm-driven skill saw and decides he's going to cut that down the skinny side to make his shim the size he needs. So he adjusts the blade all the way down and holds that block in his left hand and tries to saw it with that saw in his right hand. Ends in tragedy, right? Absolutely it does. So that little piece of wood had a knot in the middle. And as soon as that blade hit the knot, it kicked that piece of board out of his left hand and the saw went across his left forearm, almost cutting his arm off. Okay? Months and months and months for this guy to recover. Um, and his fingers never fully recovered. He He doesn't have the same grip in his left hand that he used to. So tell stories like this so that people are aware of the dangers of doing dumb things at work these things will make all the difference as you go forward take that time talk about bad things that have happened in your workplace talk about good things talk about the people that are there that have never had an accident and have them talk to those people and find out hey what's your secret how how have you done this 
um, all these years and never had an accident. That's really what we want to drive home with people is that it's even in a, an extremely dangerous environment, like uh, when I managed the casting foundry, you can work with molten metal your whole life and never have an injury. But you can also have an injury if you're not paying attention. So every workplace has its hazards and every workplace has to have that attention. But that's all driven by your hiring process, your new hire training, and the tone that's set in your facility. So once this new hire training is done with your new hires, now you need to expose your current employees to this new program. And sometimes that's hard because you've got people that have been doing this their whole lives and now you're going to throw some new things at them. So really what you need to do is go to your existing employees and say, hey, we've updated some processes as we're hiring new hires. We are going to change the way that we're training them so that your lives are easier so that they're focused more on safety. And then give a summarized idea of what you're training these people on as they're coming into the facility. This will help your existing employees train your new employees, and it will also make them so that they're more aware of safety and the safety hazards that are in your facility, and so that they'll all be in the same uh, mindset as they help you establish safety culture on your work site or in your facility. So what we're going to do is every couple of days, we're going to throw up a new podcast with the questions that I get at info at dcshrm.com. I will go through and answer the questions in as quick a format as I, I can. Really what we're looking at is 15 to 20 minutes worth of information in each of these podcasts and we'll post the the notes up to the website as well and we'll post them up to social media so that as you review these if you've got questions about the programs that we're talking about or would like to demo the software dcshrm.com we can get that set up for you appreciate you taking the time to listen to this podcast because safety pays reach out to me directly at info at dcshrm.com or follow us on social media to see our posts. And thanks again for taking the time to listen to us. Have a great day.